Hey, hello friends. In this uh, uh, Flutter tutorial, we'll be learning about uh, some basic layout elements of Flutter. For example, uh, container, rows, columns, um, all these types of things that help us position elements inside of uh, our Flutter apps. So, um, in most of the applications in Flutter that you'll be creating, you'll be using at some point a row, a column, uh, or a container. So these are kind of basic elements. So uh, let's get started. So the first element that we'll be discussing is a container. So let me build a small applications. By the way, this is uh, just a basic pro uh, Flutter project in Android Studio. And uh, we have all the uh, core files and a library folder, lib folder, where I have a main.dar file. So in here, the first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be importing the material dark file that will give me access to all the material components of uh, the flutter design pattern actually so um, I'll create the wide main function that is the core where our um, the execution of the flutter application will start in the main function sorry uh, in the main function uh, we'll have uh, a run app function we'll be creating a new material app that can use all the material design components of the Google material design. So here I'll pass the uh, application title. I'll call this uh, demo application. And a home attribute. Um, for, for now, we'll be creating just a home page. Uh, as there is no home page right now, so it does show an error. So I'll create a new class of home page which extends a stateless widget. So what is a stateless widget? Basically, um, whatever widget on the screen that does not uh, um, change uh, according to the state of the application. For example, uh, you have a list of categories and you're displaying it in a list. So um, no matter what happens, the content of the list won't change so that is kind of a stateless widget so uh, in other case when you're retrieving some data from the internet and you're displaying it in a, uh, in a list view so whenever the data changes or you refresh the page so the data will is likely to change and so the list view cannot be a stateless widget it has to have some state so it will be a stateful widget and uh, um, hence its state will change and the uh, view widget will render itself again so it's it's sort of a pattern that flutter follows it this pattern is also followed by a react and react native and all those technologies so uh, if you're coming from that background you'll feel it relevant quite relevant actually so we'll add a new missing override so this is a build method uh, we'll return a new scaffold uh, scaffold will give us access to the elements such as app bar We'll create a new app bar and we'll give it a title of uh, uh, create a new widget. We'll give it a new widget of text mm, that says home. Uh, we'll give it a title of uh, what do you say? Home page. Yeah. And at this point, if I run the application, uh, I saved it, I run it. Um, it will take some time as I'm running it for the first time um, on this emulator. So maybe not, or maybe it will. So okay. So now, as the app is running on the emulator, you can see that we have a, a simple app that does have an app bar uh, with the help of scaffold, and uh, the app bar's uh, title says home page. Okay. So starting from uh, uh, containers, what is a container? And container is basically a widget that does take a width, a height, uh, and a child property. And these are the basic properties. The only property that you need to mention is a child because a container is a type of a widget that takes another widget as a, ch a child. Uh, it can take a text view, a list view, or a row, a column, anything else. So it does take only a one child. So uh, it also has properties like, um, uh, let me show you, width and height. So uh, let me just create a new body attribute here and the body attribute will create a new container container 
Okay, so as I press uh, control space here, you can see the attributes such as color, child, height, width, alignment. So the basic, the core properties that you need to concern yourself with uh, at this point um, uh, is the color, the child, height, width, and alignment. So the width and height basically decide the width of the container in which the widget is being placed and uh, the padding is self-explanatory and the alignment and the child. For now we'll be using the child property and in this we'll be adding a new text. We'll call this um, basic text. Okay. So as I save it, the hot reload will work and the application will be running here. So as you can see, there is a basic text here. You cannot right now see the container um, that contains the text because uh, the container is transparent. So for now, we'll provide it a color and we'll provide colors dot green, maybe. I'll save it again and the hot reload works and you can see that there is a container. If you can't see in the screen, let me just increase the size of the text. Uh, style, text style of uh, font size to be 25.0. I'll save it again and yeah, you can see now that the container is containing the text. The container is of uh, a green color. So. Um, at this point in time, you can see that the text is being congested into the container. So if we want to add some padding to the text, uh, padding is also a widget inside uh, uh, Flutter, in the Flutter world. So, um, okay, so in Android Studio, you do have a feature that you can just uh, uh, alt and enter on the text. And uh, there is an option to add padding, but we won't be doing this right now because um, I don't know if you're using the Android Studio or not. So for now, I'll just cut this text from here. I'll add a padding. And uh, inside the padding, I'll just keep this null for a moment. And I'll add a child of the previous text view that we were using. Okay. And in the padding, uh, there is something called edge insets. So I'll be adding new edge insets dot all. Edge insets uh, dot all, you see the all there? That will provide the same padding to all the uh, sides of the view uh, that is contained in the uh, container. So uh, we'll place the value of 8.0 uh, for the sake of it, let's say 10.0. And we'll save, save the application. and as the reload completes, you see that uh, the text view is having nice padding around it. So we'll just reformat the code. Now you can see the uh, widget structure here. We have a scaffold, we have the app bar, we have the body, the container, and the container does have the property of color, green, and the child. So uh, the text view, does have a, uh, text view does have a padding around it. So um, we can also give uh, a particular width and height to the container. For the width, we will be given it a static value of uh, 200 and height also of uh, 500. No, we'll swap the values. We'll give the width of 500 and the height of uh, 400. Are both 400 okay so when we save it you can see that the, the container does take the size of 400 uh, and 400 and uh, within it there is the text uh, we have not centered the text so it's being shown on the upper left hand corner so that is fine so now we have learned the width height color and the child property of uh, the container and these are basically the main properties that you need to concern yourself with uh, there is also alignment uh, which will align the elements of the container so um, that is not much used in case of container so I won't go to that so now we will move to another element oh yeah and uh, with this I can also show you the another property that is the center the center is also a widget in case of uh, <clears throat> like padding center is also a widget so uh, where the padding ends I'll just cut this whole portion I'll add a new center 
and in this we'll add a child and that will be the padding reformat the code and we'll save it and run it okay so now the text is nicely centered in this uh, container itself so uh, it looks pretty clean at this point so <clears throat> okay we'll just delete the center uh, and the container also now it's time to move on to the row element okay we'll keep the container there we'll just delete the child and now here we will add the row property so a row is basically something in this in which the elements uh, in which the children of the row are um, aligned in a horizontal pattern so uh, for example if we add there is a children property as a row cannot be created using a single children there needs to be uh, multiple children like multiple text views an icon or a text or something else so um, the children does um, require uh, an array of widgets so um, here we see an array of widgets in this array we'll be adding a new text we'll call this um, text one and we'll also add another text we'll call this text uh, wait we'll call this text two okay sorry for the disturbance so we were at the style and I'll add another style text to style and I'll add the font size of 20 so as I save this now you can see um, yeah that the elements are fashioned in a row there is no not much uh, padding around them so you can't see that much but uh, the elements are also aligned in a part uh, or a horizontal row so um, there are, there is another property of a row we can align the elements in a particular way so there is uh, the row all uh, takes the children and there is another property called main axis alignment so in case of row what a main axis alignment is for example you imagine a row to be uh, this way a row is horizontal in nature and a column is vertical okay so for a row the main axis is always x-axis because the all the elements that will be adding to the row will be added in a horizontal way on the x-axis so the main axis for a row is always the x-axis so in this case uh, we'll, when we add main axis alignment and we add main axis alignment dot start so when I start the application there is at all no change because the main axis alignment dot start it is, is it is the default alignment of a list of a row sorry so when I change this to main axis alignment dot space between you can guess what will happen both the text views will be um, taken to the edges of the container with the space between the elements so even if I add a third text view and we call it um, text uh, 2 and there will be text 3 and when we save it all the three elements will be equally spaced in the row text 1, text 2 and text 3 so there are a few other properties like uh, space around and space around will center the elements in the row so when when we save it and we can see that the space uh, the space around all the elements and the, um, the space is equally between all the elements and they're kind of centered in the row so these are the few properties of main axis alignment and cross axis alignment uh, is something um, that affects the cross axis that means the y axis in case of the row so for the row the uh, main axis is the x-axis and the cross axis is the y-axis okay so uh, these are the two main properties of row so we do not uh, need to go further along the way uh, you can experiment where you are the properties when you click the control space you can see there are a bunch of properties text direction text baseline cross axis the main three properties are always main axis cross uh, axis and the children property so in the row, uh, we'll delete the row for now. Uh, okay, we'll delete the row and we will change. Okay, so we do not need to delete the row. We'll just change the um, 
row to column. Now you guess what happens. Now as I save the application and unload it in the emulator, you can see that the texts are aligned in a, uh, in a vertical fashion with the main axis alignment of space around. In case of row, all the elements were spaced evenly in a horizontal way. So in case of column, all the elements are arranged in a vertical line with space evenly divided between them. So all the elements are centering uh, in a column that covers the entire container. Okay, so we have text one, text two, and text three. Same in the case of column, we have cross axis alignment, uh, cross axis alignment that in this case will be the x axis. For the column, the main axis is the y axis where it expands, and the uh, cross axis is the x axis. Um, this is the simplest way to understand that the main axis is the area where the column will expand and in case of row uh, it is the x-axis and the column it is the y-axis. So uh, these are the three main elements, the container, the column and the row and uh, there are a few other elements like center and padding uh, that I taught you in this tutorial. Um, so these are the basic layout elements that you always need to have um, in your skill set while developing Flutter applications because uh, these are most likely to be used in every application that is developed using Flutter. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something and uh, I'll be coming up with more complex videos um, in a few days. So I um, hope you guys have a good one. See you in the next one.